In this episode of Music Geology, we're diving into the fascinating journey of a song that took its time to become a top 10 hit. Now let's go back to 1980 to the iconic Sound City studio in Van Nuys, California, where Rick Springfield was hard at work crafting tracks for what would eventually become his platinum album, Working Class Dog. While at the studio, he received a suggestion from his co-producer Keith Olsen to add a song to the album that was written by Sammy Hagar back in 1978. Rick Springfield decided to go for it and RCA, his record company, gave it the green light as the lead single for Working Class Dog. However, the song initially didn't gain much traction. It was overshadowed by another song from the same album, but this one was written by Rick Springfield about his desire to be with a friend's girlfriend, and that was called Jesse's Girl. No, I wish that I had Jesse's Unlike the original lead single promoted by RCA, Jesse's Girl went on to become a major hit, soaring all the way to the top of the Billboard Hot 100. But here's what's cool. The success of his very own song, Jesse's Girl, opened the door for the overlooked lead single written by Sammy Hagar. So riding on the coattails of newfound success, the lead single got a second chance. Initially released on February 2nd of 1981, one, this song, titled I've Done Everything For You, was re-released after Jesse's Girl, and this time it struck gold. Climbing the charts, it secured the number 8 spot on the Billboard Hot 100. Now let's rewind to 1978 and first check out a sample of Sammy Hagar's original version of the song to appreciate the evolution of a hit. Here's I've Done Everything For You as originally recorded by The Red Rocker. Well, this one way love up there, it ain't fair, it ain't no kind of fair to me. I'm gonna find out what it's really like to be loose, high and free. Let's listen to what a hit sounds like. This is Rick Springfield performing the top 10 version. Now that's what we call a sonic gem. You've done 